MH Build Epoxy Free 3D Printing Resin is the go-to quality photopolymer material that provides amazingly fine details at a remarkably low price. MH Build Resin is designed for makers who produce D&D figurines, educational anatomical models, early concepts of industrial projects, and more without breaking the bank. Staying within budget with resin without sacrificing reliability has never been easier. Produced in Orange County, California, MH Build Epoxy Free 3D Printing Resin innovates the fine balance between quality, price, and color selection, offering an affordable, top-tier option in the resin market. To get an awesome print when using MH Build Series Resin, simply follow these steps. Let's check them out. MH Build is unique 3D printing resin thanks to its comprehensive formulation. It's epoxy free. Because MH Build resin is epoxy free, we were able to essentially eliminate fumes and odors. You can be in the same room and not catch a whiff of it, unlike most other 3D printing resins. This makes our epoxy free resin a much safer material to work with in classrooms, labs, offices, and at home. The epoxy free nature of this resin may require some special considerations for build plate adhesion. However, you still get details that are beautifully captured all while having a safer 3D printing environment and experience. Let's cover the first step when printing with MH Build Resin. Tuning a 3D printer's settings to a specific material is essential in achieving the best print results possible. MH Build series can be used on a variety of 3D printers, so the first step to getting a successful print is to dial in your specific printer's settings. To do this, you'll need to start by adjusting the total depth of cure. Dialing in your printer's depth of cure will ensure that you are able to achieve a good first layer on your printer's build platform. This is essential for successful prints, and to identify the setting, we will need to start with a test. Put goggles and nitrile gloves on. Always wear safety gear before handling any resin. Remove the build platform and fill the resin vat with a small amount of resin. Make sure to shake the container of resin well before pouring it into a vat. Most, if not all, 3D printing resins need a good shake to unsettle the colored pigments within the formula. Make sure there's enough resin to cover a 2 inch square in the center of the vat. Download the depth of cure test square from the Matterhackers design store and load it into your 3D printer software. You don't need to use this file, you can use any model you'd like, but we will only be printing the first layer. If you want to use a model taller than 0.05 millimeters, you'll need to stop your printer after the first layer. Navigate to the print settings page in your 3D printer slicing software. Set the first layer cure time to 60 seconds. Set the layer height to 0.05 millimeters. If your printer or slicing software allows you to control the power of your light source, set it to 100% power. Run the print. If you're not printing the depth of cure test square, be sure to stop the printer after the first layer is complete. When it's finished, carefully remove the printed square from the resin vat. With calipers, measure the thickness of the square. The thickness should be between at least 0.1 millimeters and at most 0.5 millimeters. If the thickness is under 0.1 millimeters, confirm that your first layer cure time and light source settings were set correctly to 60 seconds and 100% power, respectively. If your settings were correct, but your test print's thickness was still below 0.1 millimeters, try increasing the first layer cure time to 90 seconds. Once you have established that there is an acceptable depth of cure, the next step is to confirm proper bed leveling and first layer adhesion. Like FDM 3D printing, SLA 3D printing requires the first layer to adhere well to the build plate for a successful print. To do this, we're going to run the same test as for the depth of cure, but with the build platform installed. Attach the clean build platform to your 3D printer. Follow the leveling guidelines for your printer's build platform. This generally means removing the vat from the printer and setting it aside, so make sure that you cover it to prevent dust and debris contamination, in addition to it preventing exposure from UV light. Run the same test print from before. If you aren't using the depth of cure print, make sure to stop the print after the first layer finishes to get an accurate representation of your first layer adhesion. When it's finished, allow excess resin to drip back into the vat or carefully wipe any excess resin from the build platform back into the vat. A silicone spatula or a plastic putty knife is helpful in wiping resin back into the vat. Remove the build plate from the machine and set it on a silicone mat, newspaper, or a tarp beside the 3D printer, 3D print side up. With the nitrile glove still on, gently rub your finger across the print. It should have adhered to the platform well. Ideally, it should require a scraper and light to moderate force to remove it from the platform. Common resolutions to poor first layer adhesion are resetting the Z0 height, re-leveling the build platform, ensuring adequate resin is in the vat, air pockets or bubbles typically indicate that there's not enough resin in the vat, or you can lightly scuff or sand the surface of your platform. Be sure to follow your 3D printer's guidelines for this. 
MH Build's epoxy-free formulation necessitates this consideration more than other more toxic resins. MH Build may work flawlessly without scuffing, but you should be ready to sand the platform if adhesion is not optimal. If the part was well adhered to the platform, great! Remove it and measure the thickness with calipers. The difference between the thickness and 0.05 millimeters, which is what the first layer height was set to, is essentially your Z offset. Once you successfully remove this calibration print, you might be thinking about how well that print stuck onto the build plate and how that will affect print removal in the future. Strong bed adhesion is great for printing, but you want to be able to remove the print when you're ready without damaging the 3D print. The Wham Bam flexible build system for resin is a perfect upgrade to make part removal trivial while still maintaining fastic build adhesion throughout your 3D prints. Once you get the first layer adhesion right, then you can focus on fine tuning layer cure time. Generally, larger layer heights require longer cure times and smaller layers require shorter cure times. Any change to the layer height will likely require some change to the cure time for optimal results. If the ultimate depth of cure test was within the acceptable range between 0.1 and 0.5 millimeters and you had good adhesion to the build surface, then we recommend starting with a 13 second cure time for 0.03 millimeter layers. Some machines may not allow 0.03 millimeter layers and you may need to use 0.25. That is perfectly okay. Print the Matter Hacker's resin test tile with a 13 second cure time and 0.03 millimeter layer height. Your first layer cure time should still be 60 seconds and you should have at least three bottom layers. There are seven hex tiles in the print and each demonstrates a particular geometric condition. For layer cure time, we mainly need to make sure that all the tiles are successfully printed. This should take about 30 to 40 minutes to complete. Here are some answers to questions you may have during your SLA 3D printing experience. You do not need to clean and cure the depth of cure square before measuring. Wiping the resin off of the square while being mindful of what surfaces you're touching will suffice. Adhesion issues when first starting are mostly due to either print settings, print orientation, the print's designs, or even the brand or age of the resin. Most if not all build platforms come with a textured surface already, so if the previously listed issues are not the cause, then using sandpaper to scuff the build platform is a possible option. Lightly use 220 grit sandpaper or higher, like 320 grit or 400 grit, to create some texture on your build plate that either may not be there initially or may have disappeared due to resin filling in those textures over time. You may need to sand your build platform after every five liters of resin used. Only sand the build platform if there are adhesion issues though. If you used isopropyl alcohol to clean the print before curing, then that is the most likely cause of the white patches on your print. If the isopropyl alcohol has not completely dried after cleaning, then you'll have resin mixed with alcohol on your print, which will cause those white spots that are not removable or cleanable once cured. To avoid this, make sure to completely dry your print before curing. Using compressed air helps. Also, gently blotting your print and giving it some time to dry will also help. For best practice, we suggest not leaving the resin in the vat unused for more than a day. Resin tends to be a magnet for flying dust and hair particles, so it's best to return any unused resin into a lightproof container if not actively using your 3D printer within the day. Otherwise, depending on the brand you use, the resin can be left out in the vat within the printer for days. Every day the resin is left out though, runs the risk of potentially degrading the quality of the resin if it's sitting in non-ideal conditions, like sitting in a room above recommended storing temperatures, sitting in a dusty room, having sunlight shine where it's stored, etc. Best practices when changing resins, you'll want to do the following. Carefully pour the resin that's in the vat through a strainer and into a light-proof empty container. Scrape as much of the resin back into the bottle as you can. For instructions on properly pouring resin back into a container, separate from your container of fresh resin, check out the instructions listed in the description here. If there is cured resin stuck to the FEP, gently scrape it off using a plastic putty knife or silicone spatula. Avoid using strong force as much as possible and do not use a metal scraper. With isopropyl alcohol on the paper towel, wipe the outer sides of the vat where resin may have dripped. Pour a little isopropyl alcohol into the vat and swish it around to clean up any small remaining traces of resin and pour that mixture into a separate container that you will leave out to dry in the sun. It should evaporate so no liquids will be disposed of. After cleaning the vat with some isopropyl alcohol, gently wipe the FEP with either a lint-free cloth or cotton cloth. Repeat the previous step and this step until you're satisfied with the cleanliness of the vat. Be sure to let the vat completely dry before using it. 
Once the print has completed, you may choose to clean off any excess liquid resin on the print using a brush. We strongly recommend using a soft bristle brush as hard bristles can scratch up your uncured resin print that has not fully hardened yet. Also, do this cleaning above a surface that is covered with a silicone mat, paper towels, newspapers, or a disposable tray so your work surface remains clean and safe. Depending on your resources and preferences, there are a few ways you can choose to clean your prints after they're finished. Use an ultrasonic cleaner, in which case, follow the manufacturer's guide on using the device and what cleaners are safe to use within it. You can clean prints manually using isopropyl alcohol in a container. If you do not have isopropyl alcohol in hand, dish soap with water is an acceptable alternative. Once your prints are clean and dry, remove supports by either manually snapping them off, or you can use flush cutters to snip them off. Then use either a UV lamp, preferably within a reflective container or setup, or the sun to cure the print until it is fully hardened and dry. Afterwards, you may choose to use sandpaper, a hobby knife, or other tools to clean up any other parts of your print. MHBuild is always looking to expand our color offerings. Stay tuned. A number of factors may affect your prints separating from supports. Ensure you are printing within the right temperature range the resin manufacturer notes is ideal for printing. Decreasing the lift speed between layers may be necessary, and increasing layer time may be necessary. If your FEP sheet was replaced in between using resins, make sure the sheet is not too tight or too loose. It needs to be only slightly flexible to properly release the print from the FEP with each lift. If the print was not printed in the same orientation as it was with previous resins, then the orientation may be the cause. If you have any comments or contributions, please drop us an email or give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Feel free to reach out with any specific questions to our support team over at support at matterhackers.com. In the description below, we have a link to our article where we list out some basic settings for the most common resin 3D printers and include some printer profiles you can easily import and have all the right settings. Keep in mind, these will give you a good starting point to build from as a foundation and to get even better 3D prints, you'll need to go through all the previously mentioned calibration steps. Once your 3D printer is calibrated and ready to run with MH Build Resin, no amount of detail in your 3D models can stop you. Best of luck with your newfound additive capabilities. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching.